Hey all, welcome to another Sepul Quarta. Here we are again on the Storyteller, trying to remember uh, everything that happened in this 36 years of a Sepultura career. Uh, today we're going to talk about the artwork, our front covers. We have 16 albums or so, um, and the, you know, in metal the front cover was always very important. Even when the vinyl disappeared and CD took over, uh, the front cover and the booklet and the digipack um, material was always very important for metal in general and of course for Sepultura. And um, I have a few covers and a few albums here that I, I'll try to remember as much as I can. So yeah, here against one of the most difficult albums of our life, <laughs> of our career. Uh, but one of those most special and, and many great memories, you know, working on against. This uh, cover, you know, Igor has all to do with it, you know, everything to do with it. I mean, he even had the tattoo of the symbolism, you know, the, the masks was his. Uh, I think he bought the masks when we went to record uh, our track with Kodo, the Kodo drummers, the taiko players. We went to Sado Island, you know, to record with them, and um, we have the the photo here, of of on in Japan on their place where they build their instruments and where they rehearse, where they live, you know. Uh, we stay there for a, for a, the whole day working with them, and it was an amazing, amazing uh, experience for us, you know. And uh, Igor was the one here to to put everything together here, you know, not actually doing the the the, the cover itself but putting all the ideas and all the elements and, um, you know, we were feeling, you know, against the tide, you know, swimming against the tide. Everybody was really against us, you know, uh, this is not Sepultura, you know, without Max, this, this and that. And then Igor left 10 years uh, uh, later in the same speech again. <laughs> and uh, we're still here, you know, talking about so um, Sepultura is much bigger than any concept or any people or any person that it is a part or was a part of this. It's uh, something else, you know, which is it's here and now it's very real, you know, alive and it's not there in the past, you know, it's here. So um, it's great. I mean, it showed against it showed us a new way of fighting for our beliefs and our music. You know, we had to rebuild everything. Max not only left the band, but he took management, he took all the label trust with him. We had to find new managers, new producers for the album. Andy Wallace and Ross Robinson produced Soulfly number one, and which was really, I mean, uh, Monty Connor again, you know, putting his uh, his choices and his favoritism uh, to, to, to work, you know, this new phase of Max and Sepultura. And we were at the same label, you know, we did Nation and uh, Roadrunner, uh, uh, also, uh, but Against was the first album without Max, and it was insane. You know, it was really, really difficult. Uh, we we had to deal with something and a lot of stuff that we didn't, you know, dealt in the past. You know, because we had a structure which um, proved not to be the right one because uh, it was a mess. You know, when uh, when Max left the band, we had to rebuild everything financially and structurally and, and everything. But uh, it was a great um, time for us because we learned a lot, you know. And uh, we start working with Todd Singerman as a management. He was one of the most important figures here to make this happen, to, to keep Sepultura alive. Those photos were, were, were done at the, um, at the studio where Motorhead was uh, rehearsing. Todd Singerman was the manager for Motorhead at the time, and we had this great connection. We were rehearsing at the same place in Los Angeles, um, and, uh, you know, it was so motivating for us, besides all the, the problems and a new singer, you know, all this, uh, these people, you know, denying the present <laughs> or a new situation, you know. But uh, we did the first tour with Slayer in, in Europe and System of a Down opening. It was a fantastic, amazing tour. We're still friends today. You know, we, we create really great bonds. And uh, I jammed with Slayer. Kerry King's jammed with Sepultura. <laughs> amazing you know 
was a, a start of something really beautiful, you know, that we, we still have today. And without against, nothing will, will be possible, you know, uh, here today now. Um, so yeah, and this photo was taken by a friend of ours, Stefan, from Holland. We went to the desert in California during the recordings as well, and uh, or the mixing or something like that. And we did uh, those pictures, which was a great adventure as well. Against. Hey, what's up? This is Derek from Sepultura. So the first album I'm going to be talking about is called Nation. It was the second album I did with Sepultura. And it was a very hectic and kind of crazy time, but a really fun time at that. Um, we were open-minded to a lot of different things. Um, we wanted to try and experiment with a lot of different things. And so the concept of the album was creating a nation, our own nation, a sepal nation, um, built on positivity, you know, really no borders, the idea of no borders, no religion, uh, unity, um, the fact that everyone's sharing. It was a utopia, a society, an idea that we had in mind. Um, we gave this idea to an artist named Shepard Ferry, who's who's incredible artist. He's very big now. At the time, he was definitely on the rise. Um, and we felt that he would be able to capture the vibe that we're going after. Um, his style uh, was the colors and everything were really similar to a lot of the artwork um, and the propaganda that was used in Russia. Um, and so this was something that was really appealing to us, not to the fact that we, we weren't communists or anything like that. Um, the whole idea, the, the concept of the album was completely steering away from communism and capitalism and any of that, you know, it was our own utopia society. Um, but we felt that his imagery would be able to bring out that strength behind the music. Um, so we gave him this concept and he, he came up with a few different ideas and the best thing that came out of it were the fist rising into the sky together in unison. And this was something that stood out for us as um, really capturing the imagery, the, the imagery really capturing the idea behind the album. Um, I think a lot of bands were even influenced from that album cover, um, one being Metallica. Uh, they had a fist on their album cover being constrained um, trying to rise up, um, but I, I feel that it's one of my favorite album covers uh, that we have for Sepultura. It was very unique. It was uh, something that a lot of people weren't expecting. Uh, I think there were certain people that weren't happy because it wasn't the typical heavy metal album cover, but we had a lot more to say, you know, we're, we're not the typical heavy metal band. So it was definitely fitting for the time. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of that, that album cover and that album. And I'm so ecstatic, ecstatic to have, you know, to have that in our back catalog is, you know, Shepard Ferry, you know, creating this for us. The second album I'm gonna talk about is Roarback. Um, Roarback, I believe I was a person that gave the idea of an artist that we should probably try and get in contact with. As a friend of mine, I had known for a very long time. Um, I grew up with him in Cleveland um, and his name is Derek Hess. And Derek is a very unique person. How I know him is because he used to make flyers for all the local shows. Um, when bands would come through, he would do the flyer. Um, and I always loved his imagery. I grew up seeing his artwork on so many shows that I went to and they were so powerful and, and it really rang true to me. Um, so I told the other guys about him and showed them some of his samplings of his work that he, has done, he had done. So with Warbeck, 
we gave them the idea of this domination of of the world being dominated by by an unknown person or entities out there um moving certain people around moving certain countries around manipulating the scenes behind the scenes but a faceless faceless person so this is a concept that he came up with that we immediately gravitated towards you know chessboard very complicated game it's like a metaphor for life certain characters that are on the board and some more powerful than others and all those pieces are being manipulated by the unknown um and so i love his raw sketching um it's very unique and it's definitely something that uh it's his style that he developed um and it's very dirty very raw and this is something that it was you know we we love so much you know once he was done with everything and again <laughs> other bands were influenced by um his work once we used him uh had his artwork on our album other bands such as in flames i believe also used Derek Hess to do their album covers. So it was another album that we did that was influence, influence other bands to use our artists. I always want to be, you know, protective of our artists, but of course they're, they're so talented. They were going to work with so many different bands. So that happened. You know, we were very fortunate to have uh, people that we were able to communicate with our message and they were able to understand that and to do the artwork in a way that had their own, they put a lot of their personality into it. At the same time, they're able to, to capture a lot of our personality of the band and come up with very unique album covers that will go down in the history of Sepultura. Thank you, Sepul Nation. Go to sepultura.com.br. Follow Sepultura on all social media profiles. See you next Wednesday.